Thank you to Leather Honey for being today's video sponsor. Hello and welcome to the house of Valentina. I'm Valentina and I am so excited to share today's video with you because I've come up with a list of hacks and tips and tricks that I want to share with you. These are easy decorating tips that will really help you to have a designer look in your home and to be able to create a space, more importantly, that really reflects your personal style and really reflects the space, the dream space that you're really hoping to put together. I think that they'll be easy to follow and I think that it'll just load you up on ideas and tons of inspiration. I hope that you'll enjoy every single one of them and that you'll want to hit subscribe and stick around a while and definitely give the video a big thumbs up if you love decorating tips that are fun and easy and inspiring. I know that I do, for sure. One of my favorite things to do if you're looking for an easy way to create a beautiful style in your space is to think about your pillows. I think the pillows are super important because they can really transform so many of the spaces in your home, whether it's the sofa, a chair, it can be in an office, it can be in your bedroom. A pillow can do a lot of work for you. And I absolutely love the fact that it, they can give you a lot of personality. Like this one, There's they come in all different sizes and shapes. They come in all different colors and textures. And you can so easily express yourself with pillows. Personally, one of my favorite little hacks is to make sure that you get the kind that have the zippers. That way, you can have the little inserts inside and this is one of the best hacks I'll ever be able to give you because what it does is it makes it very flexible for you to be able to change the covers on your pillows. You can have a whole stash of these or just a few, but either way, whether you wanna change them out for seasons, this one, for example, is one that I found at H&M. It's got a, a linen type material. It's really light and it's just kind of fun for summer. But then I've got velvets and wool and boucle and the options are endless. And you can have them in all different colors if you're like me and you love neutrals and maybe some animal prints or you can go for something that's bolder. You could go for something more subtle. That's the fun thing about pillows is that it really is just a great opportunity to really just express yourself. And it's a low buy-in. <laughs> it's a really low buy-in, especially if you shop at some of my favorite places, which are H&M. I love to shop even at uh, West Elm Pottery Barn. A lot of times we'll just have some really gorgeous ones. I always like to buy something, especially if you're buying a staple, to look for something that will really have the longevity. So buy a few solids that you can keep and rotate through. I love to have velvets for the winter and linen for the summer, but you can also mix and match those and, and have a lot of fun, whatever the season is. But yeah, so definitely look for these. I buy the covers from all those different places. The inserts, I either buy at Pottery Barn or I've been buying them on Amazon. And I'll leave you a link for the down pillow inserts, but I also have a down alternative that feels just like down. Either way, whichever one you choose, what is so important about it is that this gives you the ability to kind of give it a big, nice hug. I know that a lot of designers are like, karate chop it and give it some ears. That's not a look that I personally love because part of what I like is to create a look that just looks a little bit more natural. Now, if you saw my last video where I showed you what my family room looked like right after everybody had been in there, you know, people have asked me, why do you do this thing? Why do you fluff the pillows? Well, because when you've been laying on them, they just look kind of like mushed and you know, they just don't look that great. So I really like to have the ones that have the down inserts because then you can just give them a good squeeze and a gentle little kind of mush in the middle and they just look a little bit more natural and a little bit more awake. So that's why I like to have those down inserts for being able to change them and also to be able to mold them. And the fiber fill a lot of times just, it gets kind of gross and it ends up in chunks and then the pillow's not comfortable to sit on. I like to have pillows that you can actually lean on and actually use and you know, actually enjoy your home. I will definitely leave links for all the items that I'm featuring, whether it's a picture or it's something that I'm talking about here. I will leave all the links down below and I do try my best to try to put them in the order in which you're seeing them in the video. <laughs> so it makes it a little bit easier for you to find them because sometimes there's a lot of links. And if you're on a TV watching, you'll need to go to a computer or your phone to be able to see the description box because I don't think it, I don't think they figured out how to do it yet to where it will do it on the TV. So sometimes you guys are like, I don't get it, where is it? 
you have to be on your phone or your computer, I think, or your iPad or something like that. But I don't know why, it doesn't work as well with a TV. Number two, I like to use decor to create a personal statement. I think it's really important to not just rush out and whatever is available at your local store to just pick it up and just grab it. I think that using tools like Pinterest, uh, Instagram, shopping around a little bit more, we just showed our Scandinavian haul where I got these vases. They were from Copenhagen and from a designer. And I think there's a lot of options out there. I personally love to buy some really great classic accessories. I think that it can really help you to have longevity to your decor. And I think it'll give it, it'll make it so that you can actually, if you get tired of it in the living room, you can switch it over into the family room. And if you get tired of it there, you can put it in the bathroom or in your bedroom. So I like to shop at places like Pottery Barn and you can find some really great staple items at places even like Target and Amazon. They, there's so many beautiful accessories like a vase, some beautiful books. I know that I really love to have big coffee table books like this one. Uh, this one's the Tom Ford and it's a nice big book and of course it's got, you know, James Bond in there and I think that when you have great accessories like this, it's something that will really dress up your space, but it'll also really define your personality. I think it's fun to create your personal style through your accessories and to really create a look that, that expresses your own interest and what just really jumps out at you. For me, I love sculptural pieces as you, as you can see with my vases here. I think it can be a lot of fun to have something that feels just a little bit artistic like that, but then I also have a lot of classic pieces and I think it's really nice to maybe mix it up a little bit and that's where the exploration of your own style can really be a lot of fun. Now, one of the things that I do when I'm styling is that I do like to create a little bit of a triangle with my decor. If you've heard of any interior design rules, you've probably heard of the rule of threes. And that's just the rule that you would want to group three items together. Now, a lot of times people will have them spread out all over the place and it feels like they're just sort of not having a conversation with each other. So what I like to do is I like to pull things together and have a little grouping of items. But rather than being a slave to the idea of threes, I really like to use the triangle. So whether you're creating an obtuse triangle, a right triangle, an acute triangle, and on and on, the main thing to think about is the way in which the items compare together. And you'll really wanna, if you use this, it'll help you because you'll have, of course, it's a rule of threes. There's three points to your triangle. And if you think about the way that you're gonna read your items sitting together when they're grouped together, you don't have to be a slave so much to the rule of threes. You can have multiple items that are mixed together. It can even be like here where you've got the greenery and it runs down and then it comes back. And the book is actually, let me see if you guys can see this. Look, I'll show you. So I've got, the greenery here that runs down and it creates the little triangle with the book and then it comes back to the candle. So don't feel like you have to be a slave to the idea of threes. There's more than three items sitting here. In fact, I've slightly thrown it off with something in the front. It technically wouldn't go if you're obsessing over the rule of three. So instead, I like to think of a triangle and then you have a few more options to work with. But pulling things together and helping them feel like they're having a conversation with each other will help all of your decor look amazing. I wanted to take just a moment and thank our video sponsor for today, which is Leather Honey. They are sponsoring our next tip, which is to take good care of the items that you have. It really will extend your budget and extend the longevity of your pieces. And I think that taking care of what you have, it's huge. Uh, I love Leather Honey because they've got this beautiful leather care kit. They have been uh, making leather last longer since 1968. They have this beautiful kit that they've sent me and I've been putting it to use on the leather items in my home. You can also use it on vinyl, faux leather, there's all different surfaces that you can use it on. And they've got the leather cleaner and they also have the leather conditioner. And if you get the little kit, it's got the little cloths in there and this is everything that you need to revive your leather items. I use it on my little mouse pad to give me a little test area and I'm just amazed. It just instantaneously brought the brightness back up. I use this thing as a coaster. <laughs> when I'm sitting at my desk, it's a coaster. It's half the time if I'm eating a snack at the desk, it's, you know, crumbs and <laughs> I'm just being honest. 
it gets pretty abused and it just looks amazing now. So you can use this on some of your small accessories. You can use it on purses. You can use it on car upholstery. There's all different surfaces that you can use it on. It's incredible. I know that you guys are going to absolutely love Leather Honey. They very kindly have given me a discount code. So go to my link down below and enter my code HOUSEABOW20 to save 20% on Leather Honey's complete leather kit. Then you can see all the ways Leather Honey's cleaner and conditioner can help prolong the life of your leather. I'm a huge fan. I know that you guys will be as well and this kit is going to last me for so long and it's gonna be amazing so I'm very excited thank you to leather honey for sponsoring today's video we really appreciate it and uh, now back to more decorating next up we have empty spaces and I think this is what a lot of times will help it'll keep your spaces from feeling finished so a lot of times we we figure out what sofa we want, we figure out what coffee table we want, we figure out the rug and maybe a lamp and, and some other things in the center of the room. But a lot of times there's little corners of the space, some of the corners in the back of the room, maybe you've got a bigger corner and you just don't know what to do with it. Corners to me, these empty little corners are such an opportunity to really help your space just feel complete. So I have a few things that I like to do with my corners. I love to use faux trees. I think you can see back behind me. I've got a faux tree back here. It's sitting in a nice big planter and I've even got space for an oversized floor length mirror. I also sometimes will just leave the planter sitting by itself. I use the spheres that are back here. They're sitting there. Sometimes those are great for a corner or an empty little space. I also like to use, um, I've got little lanterns sitting over here. And you can also, if you have a really big corner, you can also put a chair there. So you have a lot of different options so that you can really utilize those corners and make them something really great. I've also got the lamp sitting right here and lamps are another thing that look really, really great in a corner and they help light the room. So just a few things to think about rather than leaving the corners of your spaces empty, think about little ways that you can fill them up, but not make them overcrowded. The next one, I really should have started with this one because when I'm doing a design consultation, this is actually where I start with my clients. I was kind of making my list as I was thinking of them and I really should have put this one first because this is probably the most important one that I'm going to share with you and it will completely change the way that you decorate and will change everything in your home. I love to have a color palette. As a designer, it's something that I use for every project. It's how I start everything. I don't think that a color palette is just one or two colors. A color palette is really important because it will help define what it is that you should even be shopping for. And I think it's so important. You have to start with this. So don't just think about, I want white, I want black. Think about what kind of white. Do you want a creamy white? Do you want a soft black or a stark black? Then you can start thinking about uh, what kind of wood tones do you want in there? Are you gonna have a pop of color? What kind of colors balance really well with those? I think that a lot of times, if you, if you have this in place, it'll help you decide what kind of sofa you need, what kind of marble should be on your coffee table. It helps you decide what kind of a rug you should be looking at. I personally recommend also including uh, your metal tones. I personally recommend also including textures in that. So I like to include linens and cottons and velvets. Are we gonna have fur? Are we gonna have brass? Are we gonna have bronze? What are we working with? And I like to put it all together and really keep it to where when I go to make a decision, I'm able, I can pull it up on my phone if I've created a digital copy, which I have actually. In fact, I'll leave a link down below and I'll just let you have a, a free download of my own uh, color palette if you guys would like that. It's free, you just click on the link down below and you can see my own color palette and how I've kind of thought through. And I think if you go back and you look at our home tour, our playlist that we have for our own home, you'll see that that color palette has been working itself around the house. And I originally started with a color palette that was all, like four colors, <laughs> black, white, and two shades of gray. <laughs> and I realized that I didn't like living in a house that was that stark. And so I added, started adding more colors, more textures. I didn't like only having one shade of metal in my house. And so it can be a really good learning tool actually to help you discover yourself. And you might want something that has lots of color in it. You might want something that has lots of neutrals. You might want something that's got a lot of saturated color. And then you might want something that has 
lots of really muted colors. That's the real joy of it. And I think that Pinterest is a really good place to start. And I'll leave a link for my own Pinterest down below in the show notes as well. So you can see I have lots of color palettes there, lots of styles represented because of course I'm working with all different people and I love to be able to really get into their minds and figure out what makes them tick. And this is how I do it is creating that color palette. It's that important. You'll thank me for it later. Repetition is something that I think that a lot of people only associate with color. I bring this one up because a lot of times I'm with my clients and they're stressed out because they're trying to get perfect matches to this fabric needs to perfectly match this and that and they've got it lined up and they're about to have an anxiety attack because they don't know what to do because it's not a perfect match. I think matching your undertones is really important to where things feel like they belong together, but they don't have to be an exact match. So when you think about repetition, having your colors repeat in your space is important. So I've got black up on the fireplace, I've got a black chair, I've got a black screen, I've got a black piece of art, you've got the dark, almost bronze color of the, um, of the mirror, then you've got this almost black over here of the lamp, and you can see how I've moved that color around the space so that there isn't just one standalone of that item. And it's really all about those tones. If you saw our rustic luxury video, I showed this room with all brown tones, and I mixed it in with pillows, I had some accessories mixed in, I had baskets in those tones. So it wasn't just an exact repetition of the one color, but you do need repetition of the color. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, repeat, but not like, <laughs> don't make it too matchy-matchy. Another thing that I do that you'll see even behind me in my own room is that I repeat the, the greens. It's another element that I use that I'm repeating. So I've got green, greens of the tree, then that reflects in what's up in the vases, and in, I'm moving you around the space. and. I repeat, I repeat the greens and I repeat that item throughout the space. So for you, that might be a linen texture. You wouldn't wanna just have it once. You might wanna have a linen repeated throughout your space. If you have rich velvet pillows, you might need a rich throw to go with it and for the space to feel cohesive. You definitely want repetition. Just don't get too bogged down in it. Have fun, figure out what you really love. A lot of times you might be drawn to some of those things anyways, but I say, Keep going, don't just buy one element, keep it going. Maybe have some more furniture, maybe you need a little side table or a book or something that will bring that color reference somehow into the rest of the space so it just feels like everything has come together. Another thing that I absolutely love to do is I love to mix styles. I think a lot of times we get caught up in the way things used to be done, and I don't know, maybe this is just how the people I knew did things and what I saw in magazines and what drew my eye, but I feel like for so long, themed rooms were so big, and now it's really all about mixing styles. But that can be a little bit tricky, because if you just mix let's just say eight different styles, your room could end up feeling really chaotic and just lost a little bit. And we don't want you to have that. So instead, what I like to do, I have a little bit of a formula. Don't be a slave to the formula, but just think about it in your own space. I like to have about a solid 75% of one style. And then what I'll do is I'll take the other 25% and I'll play. I might have 10% of one other style and then I'll play with the other styles because you need the anchor of the space to feel like these pieces go together. You also have to think about the scale because a lot of times if you're blending, let's say something really modern like this sofa with something really traditional, they may not work well together. I had this beautiful leather chair, <laughs> beautiful leather recliner, beautiful but the scale was so wrong and the heights were so bizarre that it just didn't work. But I've got this lamp that's sitting here and it's got a more classic design to it. And so I'm able to bring something from a different style and bring it into my space, but you have to be mindful that things still feel cohesive and that the styles really work together. And you're the best judge of that. If it doesn't feel right, it probably isn't right. It's never gonna feel right to you if you've already decided that it doesn't feel right. Trust your instinct, trust your judgment. You are the artist of your home, it's your canvas, and you get to make it whatever you want it to be. I also like when I'm trying to mix styles, I like to use that color palette. I think it's really important. Again, should have been the first thing I talked about, but that color palette will really help you to blend 
different styles because if you do like to have quite a few different styles, if you know what kind of metal you want, if you know what kind of fabrics you want, you can play with a lot more different styles but bring them together with your color palette. It'll really help you and I think that you're gonna find that it'll take a lot of the pressure off and you may just say, it's not gonna feel right. If I take this from the super traditional style and I try to juxtapose it with this, if it's like the only thing. So I might just need some more of that style to help it just feel put together. So now we're repeating. Yeah, you can see all these things just really play off of each other and it'll really help you to create a room that really does express yourself but also feels put together and cohesive. I think those are really important things. The last tip that I have for the day is to think about scale. Scale is super important. I. 100%, I love to save money. I love to spend as little as possible. But sometimes if you buy lots of little tiny things, it can make your space feel very cluttered. It can also mean that you need to actually buy more things. So I prefer personally to have fewer items that are larger in my space. It doesn't mean that you need to upsize your rug to where it actually hits the walls <laughs> and rolls up the top. No, you don't want it to be so big it can't fit. I think measuring your space and really understanding keeping your walkways so you have at least 36 inches to be able to walk through your space so you can move about it comfortably, those are all really important things. But if you can scale up on your sofas, scale up on your coffee tables, scale up on your accessories, it'll really help your space to feel complete without needing quite so many things. And that's a little tip that I use myself because I like for things to look more paired back. I feel like it gives a very casual elegance to my spaces that I create for my own home and for my clients. And so one of those little tips that I do is that I scale up on most things. It doesn't mean that you have to scale up on everything, but it does help the space to feel really put together. It'll help you to need less items and ultimately it'll save you a lot of money. Well, I think that is about all the time that we have for today. I hope that today's video was super helpful for you. I'm gonna leave all the links for today's video down in the show notes for you. Um, even the pictures and things, you can check out my Pinterest where a lot of the inspiration comes from. I always link to everything as I can so that you'll make sure you can find that and I hope you'll find lots of inspiration. I think a lot of times people think that creating a beautiful home must mean that you have to have an, an enormous budget, <laughs> an endless budget, and it's actually not true. We shop at places all the time like Amazon and H&M, and we find these beautiful pieces like the pillows and a lot of those items, the decor and things like that, that can really save you a lot of money and also give you the, that designer look. And being able to use these little tips and tricks and hacks will help you to decide on the right pieces because that's actually how we're able to do this ourselves and create so many beautiful rooms on a budget. It's just really knowing which things to pick. So I hope that today's video has been super helpful for you. I hope if you haven't hit subscribe already that you will hit subscribe and become a part of our community. I love it when you guys chat with me down in the comment section. So leave a comment and let me know which of these items is your favorite. And if you have a tip or trick that you'd like to share with us, we love hearing from you guys. And especially if you live in, you guys live in all different places. So your perspective on design is always unique. And I just love the variety and the uniqueness that you guys bring. And I think that's just really cool. It's what I love as, as a designer is getting inside my clients mind and trying to figure out what they see, what they love and creating a space around that. So when you're doing it for yourself, take the time to be indul self-indulgent and really discover who you are and what really makes you tick. And I think that you'll end up with a space that expresses you and also feels like home. If we can accomplish that, I will consider that a day well spent. So thank you again. I'm gonna sip my coffee and um, eat some of my figs that I have sitting here and uh, I'm gonna get back to work. So thank you guys again. I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> Bye.